Okay, uh, thank you. And also, uh, thanks for the organizer. Today, that uh, <coughs> uh, today I want to introduce a new method, uh, multi-level segment analysis uh, uh, we have developed in recent years uh, for data analysis. Uh, here, at, uh, especially if you're interested in to get uh, the flow structure and the scaling relations, this method may be interesting for you. Uh, we know that uh, when we talk about the turbulence, here that uh, always that uh, we are interested to talk about a multi-scale. And uh, because that uh, in, in the turbulent flow system, there are many different scales, those scales, they, are, they interact. Such interaction at, uh, definitely leads to kind of at a mixing, mixing of some physical properties. Here, property is a general word. You can understand the property as, uh, as many different things. Okay. Then that, uh, if you are, we are trying to do at a data analysis, this time that a uh, lot of data available, we can do uh, very large simulation and also at, uh, very at, uh, good at uh, data from at, uh, experimentation. Then that a uh, uh, lot of data available, now that the next step should be at, uh, from those data, what kind of information or what kind of physics we can get. This is that uh, actually such topic is that uh, more and more important than that to get the data itself. Then that uh, scale interaction that uh, we know that uh, will lead to at, uh, statistics that they got mixed. But uh, from that uh, fundamental viewpoint, if we want to understand the turbulence, we want to understand that uh, different, uh, in different regimes that uh, the statistics, actually we want to uh, separate such kind of mixing. Physically, they are mixed together, but actually we want to separate such mixing. Then that, uh, if we know that uh, in different regimes that clear physics, that will be great. However, at, uh, how to do such kind of, at, uh, how to separate such kind of mixing is not easy. Okay. And then at, uh, Today, that uh, we'll introduce a new method trying to separate such kind of mixing. Um, <clears throat> for example, at, uh, when we consider at, uh, the structure function, structure function, at, uh, we do scaling analysis. Uh, we know that uh, from uh, uh, Wiener Keating at the theorem that uh, here that uh, different at the wave number that uh, they all have that uh, always have contribution at, to different scales. So, such kind of because you do, uh, once you do average, then that definitely will, you will lead to a, those kind of strong mixing. So uh, then that uh, the possible idea to, uh, we want to uh, uh, try to uh, understand that uh, the statistics in different regimes that uh, people always had uh, possible uh, solutions for that. One thing that uh, we do at uh, large Reynolds number simulations, but we know that uh, this is not easy to do. And even you can do very large Reynolds number simulation Sometimes that uh, physics still unclear. Okay, and then that uh, here that uh, from our understanding, a better way is that uh, maybe at uh, of course you can do larger Reynolds simulation. But another direction is we do not do larger Reynolds simulation, but we are trying to develop it, some new data analysis methods. Then that uh, this direction may be more effective to help us to understand the physics. Okay. Uh, here that uh, the idea we get started at, uh, from such kind of very simple picture. Basically, uh, simple things that could be, could be at, uh, beautiful and important. We see it, uh, if we have that, uh, those kind of uh, different uh, the, uh, profile, velocity, temperature, scale of different profiles. So you see, and for this case, typically we see it uh, just at a uh, a uh, single, <laughs> single component, you see it, which such kind of length scale. Okay. And here, to, for this case, you see, uh, we have that uh, typically two different uh, structures. One is that uh, the small scale structure, okay, the ripples. Okay. Another structure is that uh, the large fluctuation. So for such kind of scale, basically, there are two different structures. And in this case, <laughs> we have that uh, those kind of that, uh, peak and this kind of that, uh, large uh, scalar fluctuation and uh, very short uh, spatial scale and uh, also this kind of structure is uh, uh, small that uh, uh, function difference but a large at uh, spatial scale. 
Then that uh, based on those uh, typical skills, uh, typical examples that uh, we believe that uh, skill that uh, should be determined by structure. Mathematically, skill can be an uh, arbitrary input. You can change uh, the skill and uh, let it uh, as a kind of independent input. But actually, physically, especially we are talking about uh, turbulence, skill should be determined by structure. You see, it, uh, for this case, if we have uh, those kind of uh, the structure, basically we have uh, only two typical skills, large, uh, large wave number component and uh, small ripples. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> then that, uh, the next step, if we think about a skill determined by structure, the next step is how to separate or how to define such kind of better skills exactly. But not uh, if you do full uh, decomposition, you can also define skill, but that, those kind of things uh, is just approximation. It makes a lot of things. Here we want to define that uh, exact uh, spatial scale. Yeah, then that uh, uh, very simple uh, observation is that uh, extreme are conditional valid. It means what? It means that uh, if we use a small window, that uh, here that uh, we just got at uh, those extremal points, okay? And then that if we use a large observation window, we got uh, those extremal points. Actually, uh, those here, local extremal, uh, it is valid only when you set observation window very small, you got it. Uh, this, that is an extremal point. But if you enlarge observation window, this point is not extremal. So then <coughs> this idea is that uh, extremal conditional valid we just uh, by changing the window size. Okay. <coughs> then that, uh, uh, here that uh, you see it uh, same profile that uh, we change window size, we see it extreme uh, points at uh, distribution very different. Okay, got those. Now that uh, <coughs> based on this observation, we developed a multi-level segment uh, algorithm. The algorithm is the following. Uh, first that uh, S is uh, uh, the window size, you can change S continuously from small to large. Then that uh, for a specific S, and you found that uh, the set of extremal points, so x1, 2, and n. Then that, uh, from that, uh, those extreme point uh, set, we can define that uh, segment. Segment is that uh, uh, the structure between two adjacent extremal points. We define this as a segment. Then that uh, this segment has that, uh, the two characteristic parameters. One is a function difference another than skill difference. Okay, so that, uh, when you set, uh, let's go back at, uh, to this plot. If you had to uh, set a small window size, that you got uh, this segment one, segment two, and segment three. And if you uh, use that uh, large window size, you got uh, this segment, different segments. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then that uh, next step is that uh, we change, we change it uh, S continuously because it's, uh, you have that uh, different uh, structures, at uh, small wavelength, small lens, and larger lens structures. Then that uh, we want to capture all different uh, segments. Therefore, we need to change that uh, S continuously. Then that uh, for different S, we can also, if you change S, we may get a different uh, segments. Then that uh, for different segments, of, you can also have that uh, those characteristic parameters. Then that uh, you collect finally you collect all the segments from that uh, obtained from different window size. Then that uh, you, do, you do your statistics. Uh, this is that uh, illustration, we still use this example. And uh, if you set at a small window size, you got segments look like this. Then that uh, you use that uh, large window size, you got at segments, segment one, segment two. Okay, then that uh, actually this is a special example. For turbulence case, at, uh, you have also intermediate, many different intermediate at the segments, then we collect all of them and do analysis. Um, here that, uh, once we have that uh, the algorithm, we all check, at, uh, based on this algorithm, what kind of results at, uh, to, for different at test case and uh, for a real turbulent case. Uh, the benchmark checking is that uh, we, Consider a fractal Brownian motion and the turbulence case that uh, we checked the Lagrangian 2D and the sea surface temperature. So we'll go through at this, those examples. Um, here that uh, the fractal Brownian motion and uh, 
for this signal, we have that very good at theoretical results that the scaling should be proportional to the host number. Uh, this is unknown. Uh, and you see it uh, use our new method. Actually, we got a pretty good at results. And here, that, uh, when that each very small, at uh, this part, we have deviation. The deviation may be from that, uh, uh, the following observation, because uh, typically we use a different algorithm to generate the FBM data. That, uh, for, for example, the Woody Chan algorithm. But this algorithm that, uh, is not the same as that theoretical that, uh, the case. They inter introduce some artificial that, effects. Uh, if this is the case, that means that our new method may be at, more capable to detect such kind of at, very sensitive difference. Okay. Then that, uh, for turbulence data, uh, one thing is that uh, the first case are Lagrangian turbulence because at least data is that uh, it's very uh, uh, it's a kind of challenging case. So uh, people at uh, it's not easy to find the scaling relation, and then that we use our method to check if that we can find the scaling. Uh, the uh, data from DNS that uh, DNS that uh, the setup uh, so that parameters are the following, that uh, Ekman and Navier Stokes equation, and uh, here that uh, 2D, oh, sorry. Here that uh, uh, Reynolds number based on the lambda uh, uh, length scale is at uh, 400, and uh, totally at, uh, we, are, we have 0.2 million Lagrangian uh, particle trajectories. And uh, for each tra trajectory, at, uh, the velocity components at, uh, are very, at, uh, with that uh, have very good resolution at 0.05 Kromogol scale, at, uh, which can resolve that uh, at, uh, get at, uh, all of the detailed information. So here that uh, you see at this result, if you use a classical structure function, typically at, uh, you cannot see any initial scaling. It's just around the curve. No initial scaling because here at, uh, we check that uh, we presented the compensated and the result at, uh, based on that, uh, the Kromogov analysis. So it now plan two, so no scaling relation. Now you see it uh, use our new method and actually this curve. Okay, this is another different method. You see it uh, here at, uh, the scaling relation is very clear. So it uh, checked back based on that uh, the uh, dimensional argument that we got at. Uh, so it's uh, very good at uh, agreement with that uh, the prediction. But uh, you see, it, uh, the initial regime is pretty large. So then that uh, second example at uh, 2D turbulence. 2D turbulence is also at very challenge. <coughs> here that uh, uh, we based on DNS at data. So uh, here at uh, ekman obstacles equation at the 2D is at uh, 8,000 Q. So this, actually, this 2D DNS that uh, not very large. So even with, with this set, uh, relatively small at uh, 2D DNS, we can still have a very good result. Now that uh, if we see here that uh, the comparison, the scaling relation from the classical structure function and uh, from our new method, multi-level segment analysis method, you see here that uh, the structure function also at a uh, no scaling relation. It's uh, almost at around the curve. You cannot see, see at, uh, which part is the inertial range. Now scaling relation. Now that uh, for here, if we use that multi-level segment me method, we see very clearly at uh, two different regimes at the forward and uh, inward cascade, forward cascade and inward cascade regime. So at uh, scaling relation at uh, very clear. You see, compared with this one. Now that uh, we further we check that uh, <coughs> this at uh, the uh, inward cascade part and the forward cascade part, and uh, those two uh, solid lines that uh, they from the, uh, some theory results. Uh, here, at, uh, if we, without at, uh, such kind of at, uh, novel method, actually we cannot get a scaling. Without such kind of scaling relation, we cannot understand uh, the 2D turbulence physics, for example, intermittency. You see, it, uh, based on our result, because we can get a uh, very good scaling relation, and uh, then that, uh, we check at, uh, the exponent relation with Q. So then that, uh, based on that, so we do at uh, the singularity spectrum. This results shows clearly that 
for the forward cascade is more intermittent, and for the backward is that less intermittent. At very strong evidence show that two skinning regime and intermittency results. And so, uh, this method that why that it is that uh, very uh, powerful to detect skinning. That uh, the physical reason is that because it is able to separate uh, different uh, the structures, different scales. Okay, this is the physics. Then that uh, from numerical at uh, test that uh, it prove our kind of uh, intuition. So this method it is it can work uh, successfully uh, to detect 2D and Lagrangian that. Uh, very, very challenging case to get scaling. And uh, another case is that uh, uh, case one and case two uh, for numerical data. And this case that uh, we also had, uh, we try to check at experimental data and uh, see surface at temperature. Uh, this at uh, kind of open source data. Uh, here at uh, this plot shows the, uh, the sea surface temperature got from the floaters. and. Uh, Totally have that globally have so many floaters and roughly show that how that floaters are distributed due to a large scale motion. And here that we define a mean at sea surface temperature. So this one, this at the profile of that we define that the mean sea surface temperature. So we want to to do some analysis of this profile. So at the physical meaning of this kind of at mean temperature. Uh, it's not quite clear, but at least that it is related to a large scale at motion, uh, and so at a uh, termed structure, 2D structure, and so on. <clears throat> then uh, you see it uh, use our new method. We also see it uh, very clear at uh, the scaling relation, so at uh, time and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, dart s. Okay, very clear at, uh, relation. Uh, if you use structure function at uh, no such kind of uh, beautiful results. Also, it's uh, kind of round curve if you, you just use structure function. Then that, uh, this plot will show uh, also at, uh, the skinning exponent relation at, uh, from MSA and uh, uh, here about Horn and the transform. So at, uh, those two methods are uh, actually very close. And you see structure function at, uh, very different from at, uh, those two results, which means that if you use structure function at, uh, here, at, uh, maybe uh, you get some kind of at, uh, uh, incorrect physics, so that uh, you see structure function indicates that uh, the flow field is more intermittent, but, but actually it may maybe not. So here it, uh, you see it uh, much less less intermittent and uh, more intermittent. Okay. Um, here that uh, the last example, at, uh, just a new <laughs> result, that I also want to show. Uh, this is at uh, uh, wind tunnel experimental data uh, from the Lily One University. At uh, we said. Uh, Many different cameras, and use our new method. We detect the scaling. As you see, scaling is very beautiful, and actually, uh, at different wall uh, normal distance, that uh, the scaling at uh, will be slightly different. So it, uh, the blue dots and the red dots, and this that uh, also shows some important physics. If we, the same same thing that uh, if you do do this by structure function, no such kind of results. Okay, structure function, no such kind of results. So. <clears throat> Now that uh, I want to make the main conclusions are the following. This method is uh, uh, very interesting turbulence. Actually, this method you can also use the for some anal uh, to analyze some other com uh, complex systems, not necessarily be turbulence. We tried, for example, we tried at uh, the financial financial data and also got some very interesting <laughs> uh, features. Uh, this method is generally valid. At, uh, it can be, uh, even at it's uh, very noisy, and even at uh, you missed some data, so even at uh, uh, the data is that itself, but if you do full analysis, for example, data needed to be periodic, but uh, our method is uh, not such kind of at special requirements. General data always possible. You have some data, you got a lot of noise, still at, it will be helpful, it will help you to extract that the, the physics, at least in some range, you want. A noise, let's just imagine that if noise is just uh, kind of at uh, the random noise, then that uh, scale very small. Scale very small, then that uh, we use our method. Noise just influence at uh, the small scale part. At large scale part, noise cannot influence. 
you can still have that very good physics. Okay. Then that uh, uh, here that uh, physically why that least method is that uh, able to detect that uh, good physics because that it separates the skill mix, uh, the structure mixing. Then that uh, separate that uh, the scaling relations to help you to get at uh, pure physics in different regimes. Okay, so that's all of the key points and uh, I, any question at you will be welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody have a question?